Adripithecus ramatus. Scientists are still uncertain if they know whether the Adripithecus or the Adri is a direct ancestor from humans. They lived in eastern Africa about 4.4 million years ago and were originally classified in 1994. They stood up upright and had the ability to move on all four limbs and trees. And their body was similar to a female chimpanzee which was 100 centimeters tall. Males were a little bit bigger. Their finger bones were long and curvy and their feet were flat and had lagged arts, indicating that the Ardipithecus couldn't run or walk long distances. Their skulls were resting at top of the spinal column, indicating that they were bipedal, but somehow they walked a little different than humans. Their brains are similar in size to modern female chimpanzees and bonobos. They had large molars and canines which were shaped like diamonds. Their jaws were displayed more upright than a human's jaw. What makes them unique is their feet. Their feet bones have a divergent large toe combined with a rigid foot. The pelvis for them is useful to climb trees and bipedal activity. In 2009, scientists have found a fossil of an Ardipithecus and named it Audrey. Scientists consider Audrey's skeleton to reflect a human African ape that wasn't a chimpanzee. Audrey's fossils were found in an area in which scientists could tell that it lived in a woody environment. Australopithecus animensis the Australopithecus animensis lived in eastern Africa, in parts of northern Kenya and southern Ethiopia, around 4.2 to 3.9 million years ago. They regularly did bipedal walking, as their tibia, the larger of their two leg bones, is quite fat, which supports the idea that weight was put on their legs. They also had reduced canines compared to their earlier species. The Australopithecus afarensis. They lived in Eastern Africa in the countries Ethiopia, Eastern Kenya, and Tanzania. They lived from about 3.85 to 2.95 million years ago. The afarensis are considered to be known as the longest lived, which means they lived for about 900,000 years, which is four times what we have lived so far. They are also best known for early human species. Scientists have covered remains of over 300 individuals. What was so unique about the species is that it grew rapidly. Whenever they reproduced, their offspring would grow up really, really fast. This means that they had less time for parental guidance and less time to socialize in their childhood compared to humans. Some key physical features about this species is that the Aparentis' brains were very small. They, all, they covered up about 1.3% of their body weight. They had a low forehead and brow ridges above the eyes. Their jaws were relatively long and narrow, and their teeth were slightly rolled wider on the back than the front. Males, however, had longer canines than females. Their pelvis was like the humans, but the refinements enabled them to walk straight. They also had the ability to walk on two legs, and they had arched feet and very wide heels. It is said that they used stones, but no specific tools and material. Based on their body features, scientists could detect that an aphorentist's diet was more likely based on eating plants and fruits although they also found scratches and cuts on animal bones which could indicate that they added meat to their diet as well. The first Australopithecus skeleton found was Lucy in 1994. 40% of her bones were found. They knew it was a female for the size of her body and they could tell she was 25 years old. The Homo habilis the Homo habilis lived 2.2 to 1.6 million years ago around the eastern and southern Africa during the same time as the Paranthropus boisei. The Homo habilis had bigger brains and smaller teeth compared to the earlier hominids. This species originally ate traditional forest food like fruits, but later due to scarcity of food, they began eating animal caresses. The Homo habilis also used crude stone tools which they use to extract the nutritious bone marrow from the bones of animals. The Homo erectus The Homo erectus lived between 1.9 million to 143,000 years ago. It lived in northeastern Africa, western Africa in the countries Manasi and Republic of Georgia, and eastern Asia. This species had elongated legs and shortened arms, which are very similar to the proportions of the modern-day human body. The Homo erectus is one of the longest species that survive, almost as long as the Homo sapiens.
the Homo ergasters. They were very similar to Homo erectus, only that they lived throughout eastern and southern Africa between 1.9 and 1.4 million years ago. As tools, they used hand axes and cleavers and use of fire. The ergasters also developed the way of making stones as well. They began using these tools 1.6 million years ago. Some believe that they are considered to be like a Homo erectus and others consider it to be like a Homo sapien. Their diet consists on eating more meals than the afarensis due to the fact that they had smaller cuts and bigger brains, which required more nourishing. They didn't bury the dead, however. Evidence shows that they really cared for the loved ones and that were either injured or sick. Homo heidelbergensis The Homo heidelbergensis were named after their jaw, which was discovered near Germany in Heidelberg in 1907. They lived from about 300,000 through 600,000 years ago. They lived in the cold and hunted big animals including rhinos, bears, hippopotamus, horses, and deers. They had long legs and were about 180 centimeters tall. Their jaws were a bit shorter than the early species, and their teeth were curved at the front and spread at the back. They mostly used the tools that the Homo ergasters made. The Homo floresiensis. The Homo floresiensis, nicknamed as the Hobbit, lived about 95,000 to 17,000 years ago in Asia in the island of Flores in Indonesia. They made and used stone tools and could even hunt small elephants with these tools. This species had small brains and a body structure as they lived on the island of Flores, which had a limited food supply and did not have predators. The hobbits were one of the latest surviving humans apart from the Homo sapiens and descended from the Homo erectus species. The hobbits underwent a long-term isolation on the island, which probably resulted in the dwarfism. The Homo neanderthalensis the Neanderthals lived 200,000 to 28,000 years ago in Europe, South and Western to Central Asia. They are the closest extinct human relative. They had sophisticated tools like controlling fire, lived in shelters, wore and made clothing. They also ate plants and foods and were skilled hunters for big animals. Homo sapiens Homo sapiens or modern humans have been around since 200,000 years to the present. We evolved in Africa and are now present worldwide. Modern humans have a lighter build and a larger brain compared to our ancestors. We also show much less of the prognathism or the protruding jaw that was seen in our ancestors. Sapiens means thinkers and Archaeological evidence also suggests that Homo sapiens are the first species to show widespread use of symbolic behavior. Like other early humans, the Homo sapiens also hunted and gathered food, but hunt a larger variety of prey compared to the earlier species in human ancestry. In the human ancestry, we can see genetic drifts. Genetic drifts are the change in the allelic frequencies in a population that occurs by chance. There are two types of genetic drifts, the founder effect and the bottle effect. Founder effect. The founder effect is when a small population is isolated from the other population leading to speciation. We see this effect in the human ancestry when originally a population that migrated to the Americas probably crossing the Bering Street Bridge around 20,000 years ago. Now, observing the blood types of Native Americans, since it is very rare to find someone with blood type B, we can infer that the original population had more alleles coding for type A and type B. O blood than alleles coding for type B blood. This isolation for thousands of years has resulted in a very low frequency of Native Americans with blood type B. Bottleneck. The bottleneck effect is a large death due to a natural catastrophe. 
Here, the remaining population with random genes repopulate the environment. The Toa super eruption was a volcanic eruption that occurred about 69,000 to 77,000 years ago in Lake Toa, Sumatra in Indonesia. The Toa catastrophe hypothesis suggests that this supervolcanic eruption resulted in a global volcanic winter for 6 to 10 years, which took about 1,000 years for the cooling of the lava. The genetic bottleneck in human history occurred about 50,000 years ago when the global climatic changes due to the volcanic eruption led to the extinction of many species and the endangerment of the others.